What do you think when you hear Definitive Edition? The best version of something, perhaps? That would be my first thought as well, and it's often true, but with Rayman Legends on the Switch, well, let's just say that the Definitive Edition subtitle might not tell the whole story. Okay, so Rayman Legends is a fantastic game, no doubt about that, one of the best and most creative platform games of the past five years. Its lovely art style, variety, and sharp control stick out, and that remains true of the Switch version as well. It's still a great game. Unfortunately, in bringing it to the Switch, some things have been lost and new problems have been introduced, making for a product that is decidedly not definitive. But before we get to why, let's start with the good stuff. Rayman Legends is still very much 1080p on the Switch, just as it was across other console versions of the game. I say console because obviously it wasn't 1080p on the PS Vita. Compared to its brethren then, first impressions are positive. It looks just like Rayman Legends and it plays great. Content-wise, it does offer a few additions here as well, but none of them are particularly exciting. All the characters that were once exclusive to each platform now come together on the Switch, which is nice, and a tournament mode has been added to Kung Foot, which I guess is something, right? And well, that's, uh, that's about it. There really isn't anything else new here. Okay, so what's the issue then? Well, there's a few problems here, and most of them are relatively minor to be fair, but when you release a new version of an older game like this, you don't expect new problems that weren't in the original either. And this starts with the loading screens. And not just any loading screens, longer loading screens. Longer than any other version of Rayman Legends. For some stages, we're looking at upwards of 16 seconds, while others can load somewhat faster, though not quite fast enough. This is all when installed to the system's internal memory, by the way, which is the fastest way to experience Switch games. Move it over to an SD card, though, and loading times do increase by roughly 2 seconds on average. Now, it's not a deal breaker per se, but it is pretty disappointing for two reasons. Well, firstly, it hurts the pacing of the game, since you spend a lot more time waiting between stages, making it less enjoyable to engage in time trials or simply collecting everything in each level. It takes time to load the level itself, and then more time to return to the hub. Not great. The second problem, and the more surprising one, is found when comparing it to the original versions of Rayman Legends. It's slower. In fact, on Wii U, Levels load 50% faster on average, and sometimes even more. And this is from the disc-based version of the game. For a system known for its long loading times, it's surprising to see it load faster than the Switch version. And this is made even more puzzling when you bring the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions into the mix. When ported to the newer generation of consoles, one of its key features was the elimination of loading times altogether. The developers boasted about this leading up to release, and it was awesome. Simply jump into a painting and you're seamlessly transported to the next stage. No waiting at all. And if you can believe it, the Switch version actually loads slower than the PS Vita version. The Vita was the previous record holder for slowest loading times in Rayman Legends, but as you can see here, the Switch version has stolen the lead crown. We can't say for certain why this is, but one theory suggests that it's tied to file size and compression. You see, on Wii U, the game weighs in at 6.7 gigabytes, but on Switch, it's been reduced to just 2.9 gigabytes instead. That's great for saving space, no doubt, but the extra compression might be connected to the extra loading, as the game will have to spend more time decompressing assets. And the file size is even larger on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, of course, as those versions make use of uncompressed art assets. So how about the frame rate then? Well, on Wii U and PlayStation 4 and really most of the other versions, the frame rate was awesome. A very stable 60 frames per second. Thankfully, Switch is about the same, with most of the experience operating at a rock-solid 60 FPS. It's not perfect, however. On Switch, we noticed a couple minor blips while playing certain stages. Like this one, for instance, where the frame rate drops just a little bit while playing or perhaps this section just a little bit later in the stage. This is certainly unexpected. What's odd is that repeating these sections after death eliminates the issue entirely, suggesting that once again these hiccups might be tied to loading or asset decompression. That's our theory at least. Thankfully it's rare enough and ultimately not a big deal, but when the Wii U powers through these same sections without a hiccup, it does feel a little disappointing. Taken together, these aren't really game-breaking problems per se, but when you launch a version of a game this much later, on stronger hardware and slap the definitive label on it, well, you don't expect to encounter issues like this. 
Then there's the actual feature set. The definitive edition is missing some of the key options available on Wii U and other platforms. This is tied primarily to the Murphy stages. Essentially, on Wii U, certain stages required players to use the touchscreen to interact with the game while an AI runs through the world. And of course, it was the same on PlayStation Vita. The other non-touchscreen versions of the game, however, introduce button-based controls for Murphy. It's a very different experience, but it works well enough. On the Switch, then, both options are available, which is fantastic. But there are three caveats to consider. First, we've lost the ability to play using touch controls in multiplayer. They're available when you play in portable mode by yourself, but not in multiplayer. On Wii U, one person could control Murphy using the touchscreen while the other runs through the levels. For this one though, it kind of makes sense though, since you can't use the touchscreen while connected to a television, and using the touchscreen while somebody else plays over your shoulder might be sort of cumbersome. But there was a potential workaround that didn't happen here, System Link. On PlayStation Vita, it's possible to link systems together in order to play cooperatively with one person handling touchscreen duties while the other plays through the stage. This should have been possible on the Switch. As it stands though, cooperative multiplayer with one person using the touchscreen is not available on Switch. So that's two missing features then. And the last one? Well, we've lost the option to play with five players simultaneously. Which is strange as we know that Super Bomberman R on the Switch supports up to eight players on a single system. Five player multiplayer is a lot of fun and thus far it's only available on the Wii U. But since the Switch supports up to eight different Joy-Con connected at once, it should have been possible here. Now it could be argued that none of these features really matter, but at least two of them should have been possible and their absence does ultimately hurt the game. Playing cooperatively with a friend was a lot of fun in the original release after all. So what we have then in the end is a good version of Rayman Legends, but not a great version. With its missing multiplayer options and minor performance issues, I certainly wouldn't consider this the definitive edition. So what is the best way to play Rayman Legends then? Well first and foremost, if you still have a Wii U, that version remains a great way to experience the game, especially if multiplayer is your focus. It looks every bit as good as the Switch version, or even a little better, and it loads faster. Of course, this presumes that you still have a Wii U hooked up in the first place. I do, because the system is still awesome, but I'm sure many users have kicked it to the closet. So if you want the best technical version on a platform that you might still have hooked up then, well, the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions are supreme. With the uncompressed artwork and lack of loading screens, both versions feel great to play, and is how I recommend playing Rayman Legends today. But hey, if you just want to play the game on your Switch, you could do worse. This is still a competent port of Rayman Legends, but for a version of the game coming this much later, you would really hope to see feature and performance parity at the very least. But alas, that's not what we have here. But ultimately, this is still Rayman Legends, and Rayman Legends is an incredible game. If the aforementioned issues don't bother you, well, give it a shot. Otherwise, you can do better on other platforms. And that's all for now then. If you found this video useful or even entertaining, be sure to give us a like, subscribe, and follow us over on Twitter. And until next time, this is John, signing off.